سلام و ارادت خدمت شما رفقای عزیزم برای اولین بار در یوتیوب فارسی با آموزش زبان انگلیسی با سخنرانی های سخنران معروف جیمران در خدمت شما رفقای عزیز هستیم بچه این اولین باری که تو فضای یوتیوب فارسی این اتفاق داره میفته و من به معنی واقعی کلمه نیاز دارم که نظر شما ها رو توی کامنت ها داشته باشم یعنی این ویدیو رو تا انتها ببینید و بعد من برای ما تو کامنت ها بنویسید که چطور بوده چطوری ما میتونیم بهترش کنیم استفاده کردین استفاده نکردین چطوری بوده و من الان میخوام توضیح بدم که اساسا شما این ویدیو رو چطور باید استفاده کنید رفقای گلم توجه داشته باشید که توی این ویدیو اولا شما کلمات جدید یاد خواهید گرفت دوما شما ساختارهای جدید یاد خواهید گرفت سوما این تقویت شنیدن یا لیسنینگ برای شما اتفاق میفته و نهایتا اسپیکینگ و یا صحبت کردن شما رفقای گور هم تقویت خواهد شد اگر به این شیوهی که الان میخوام خدمتون توضیح بدم از ویدیو استفاده کنید چه اتفاقی بچه افتاده تو ویدیو ما اومدیم یکی از سخنرانی های جیم رو انتخاب کردیم چرا جیم رو انتخاب کردیم به خاطر جیم ران خیلی شمرده و با سرعت کم یا متوسط میتونیم بگیم صحبت میکنه بعد اومدیم متن انگلیسی صحبت های جیمران رو وسط ویدیو برای شما قرار دادیم و ترجمه فارسی اون صحبتی که داره میکنن رو پایین ویدیو برای شما رو فقای گلم قرار دادیم یعنی شما اتفاقی که میفته اینه که صدای جیمران رو میشنوید اون متن انگلیسی که روی صفحه در واقع متن صحبتش رو میبینید و ترجمه فارسیش هم میبینید خب حالا چطوری باید انجامش بدی ببین وقتی که یه جمله جدید در واقع جیمران میاد تو سخنرانیش میگه شما اونجا پاز میزنی اگه کلمه جدید داره کلمه جدید توی یه دفترچه یه جایی گوشید برای خودت یادداشت می‌کنی معنیش هم یادداشت می‌کنی کار بعدی که می‌کنی سعی می‌کنی اون جمله رو یک یا دو بار گوش بکنیم و بعد سعی می‌کنی عین خود جیمران همون جمله رو دوباره در واقع چیکار کنی ادا بکنی خب مثلا اگه جیمران داره میاد میگه که دیسپلین از ابسولوتلی امپورتنت فور یو خب بعد مثلا میگی آقا من کلمه دیسپلین رو نمیدونستم دیسپلین میشه نظم و انضباط ها سلف دیسپلین مثلا میشه چی میشه نظم و انضباط شخصی اینو مینویسم تو دفترچه حالا گوش کنم دوباره دیسپلین از ابسولوتلی امپورتنت فور یو خب حالا شنیدم حالا سعی میکنم تکرارش بکنم و اگر واقعا به معنی واقعی کلمه میخواید اسپیکینگتون رو یا صحبت کردنتون رو ببرید به یه لول بالاتر و مثل آدمای نیتیو صحبت کنید صدای خودتون رو ضبط کنید بعد صدای ضبط شده خودتون رو با ارزم با حضور شما سخنرانی جیمران یا اون صحبت جیمران یا صدای جیمران مقایسه کنید و ببینید چقدر نزدیکه آیا شما تونستید شبیه اون صحبت کنید هر جای جیمران استاپ کرد یعنی صحبتش رو متوقف کرد شما متوقف کنید هر جای صداش رو بالا برد شما هم بالا ببرید پایین آورد شما پایین ببرید و به این ترتیب رفقای گلم با یه ویدیو شما ده بیست تا کار میتونه برای شما رفقای گلم چی انجام بشه هم کلمه جدید ساختار جدید اصطلاحات جدید لیسنینگ شما به شدت تقویه میشه تقویت میشه و البته صحبت کردن شما همینطور مضافه بند مضاف بند اینکه بچه ها خود جیمران میدونید از سخنران های هستش که در واقع راجع به بحثه روش و توسعه فردی میاد صحبت میکنه و تو این سخنرانی که من براتون انتخاب انتخاب کردم در مورد اینکه چطور برنامه‌ریزی بکنیم چطور برای خودمون هدف تعیین بکنیم میاد صحبت میکنه خب من شما رو بیش از این نمیخوام در واقع منتظر نگردم ولی برای من مهمه که حتما داخل کامنتون بنویسید بچه برای من چون و این کارم بچه زحمت خیلی زیادی برده در واقع درستش یعنی و متاسفانه حالا ظاهرا یه سری ها هستن که از این ویدیو که به صورت رایگان رو یوتیوب داره قرار میگیره میخوان برای خود برای خودشون دارن یه سری درآمدی درست میکنن برای همین من مجبور شدم دو سه جا روی ویدیو حالا به صورت خیلی کم که مزاحم در واقع دیدنم نشه آدرس کانال یوتیوب اینا رو بذارم اینم از الان بگم که در واقع حالا کامنت ها رو بعدن سوراخ نکنید که چرا اینا رو گذاشتید دلیلش اینه امیدوارم که از دیدن ویدیو بچا لذت برده باشید توضیحات من یه بار دیگه کامل گوش کنید و برای این اساسی گفتم من تضمین میکنم انگلیسی شما ظرف 90 90 روز با این روشی که من گفتم به معنی واقعی کلمه بین 50 تا 80 درصد افزایش پیدا کنه پس کامنت ها رو یادتون نره بتره کنید لایک هم که مثل همیشه میتره کنید دمتون گرم ببینید این سخنرانی جذاب و لذت چه ببرید Every new discipline affects the rest Every new discipline makes a difference That's why action is so important. The smallest action, the least action. The action that you won't think will matter. It all matters. Take it. Because when you start accomplishing 
and the value starts to return, you'll find inspiration to do the next one and the next one and the next one. But for this whole process to work for us, we must first master the art of discipline, self-discipline, consistent self-discipline. It doesn't really matter how smart you are or how much you know if you don't use it. It doesn't really matter that you graduated magna cum laude if you're stuck in a low-paying job. It doesn't really matter if you attended every seminar that comes to town if you don't apply what you've learned. Better than knowledge is applied knowledge. And once we've applied our knowledge, we must study the results of that process. Apply our knowledge, study the results. Refine our approach. Finally, by trying and observing and refining and trying again, our knowledge will inevitably produce worthy results, admirable results. And with the joy and results of our efforts, we continue to apply, to learn, to observe, to fuel our ambition with the positive reinforcement of continued progress. Pretty soon, we'll find that we're swept into a spiral of achievement, a vertical rise to success. It takes consistent self-discipline to master the art of setting goals, to master the art of time management, to master the art of leadership, to master the art of parenting and relationships. If we don't make consistent self-discipline part of our daily lives, the results we seek will be sporadic and elusive. It takes a consistent effort to truly manage our valuable time, or we'll be consistently frustrated. Our time will be eaten up by others whose demands are stronger than our own. It takes discipline to conquer the nagging voices in our minds, the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of poverty, the fear of a broken heart. It takes discipline to keep trying when that nagging voice within us brings up the possibility of failure. It takes discipline to admit our errors and recognize our limitations. The voice of the human ego speaks to all of us. Sometimes the voice of ego says that we should magnify our value beyond our results. It leads us to exaggerate, to not be totally honest. It takes discipline to be totally honest, both with ourselves and with others. It takes discipline to change a habit, because habits are formed a little bit each day, every day, every day. Once habits are formed, they act like a giant cable. They act like a nearly unbreakable instinct that only long-term disciplined activity can change. You just got to go home and make a list after today. And here's the question to ask as you make this personal list. What am I not doing that would be easy to do? That could greatly change my health, my wealth. What am I not doing I'm neglecting that would be easy to do? Go home and answer that question personally. You don't have to put the answers on a public bulletin board. This is just all personal stuff. But here's how you get a miracle going for your life. Number one, do what you can. Get a list of the stuff you could do and you haven't done, postpone, and start cleaning that up. You can't start at a better place for personal change. It'll affect your bank account, affect your future, affect your income, affect everything. You can't start a better life change process than cleaning up what you should be doing. The man says, well, my mother lives down in Florida. Should have written her six months ago. I just can't seem to get that letter written. I'm asking you to get that letter written, clean that up, and don't walk like other people walk. Don't postpone like other people postpone. You say, well, is it as simple as writing a letter? And the answer is yes. Where else would you start for life change, personal change? Now, here's the second part of the miracle. Number one is do what you can. Here's number two, do the best you can. If that's not your philosophy, I would ask you to amend it. Let me give you the best of ancient script. Here's what it says. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might, do it with all your strength, and do it with all your power. What a good philosophy. That kind of philosophy revolutionize your life if you haven't picked it up late. Guy slips in late, company doesn't seem to mind, slips out early, first one in the parking lot, heading for happy hour. Stretches his break, comes early for lunch, late back from lunch, Company doesn't seem to notice. Guy says, best as I can calculate, I'm putting in about a half a day's work 
and I'm collecting a full day's pay. Little does he know the seeds of his own disaster are already being sown by the weakness of his own personal philosophy. It's not the economy that's going to determine your next six years. It's your philosophy about labor and about activity and about miracle and soil and seed and sunshine and rain and the economy and the banks and the money and the companies and the schools and what's going on. It's your philosophy and your attitude and then your ability to take action. All of that we call the process of life change, miracle working. Consistent self-discipline. Set up a discipline when the emotions are high and the idea is strong and clear and powerful. That's the time to set up the discipline. Somebody talks about good health and you're stirred. I said, right, I need to get a book on nutrition. Get the book before the idea passes and before the emotion gets cold. Go for the book, start the library, start the process, fall on the floor, do some push-ups. Action, gotta take action. Otherwise, the wisdom is wasted. Otherwise, the emotion soon passes. Unless you put it into a disciplined activity, capture it. Disciplines is called how to capture the emotion and how to capture the wisdom and translate it into equity. Discipline. You start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to get an apple. Get an apple, it'll inspire you to get a book. Get a book, it'll inspire you to get a journal. Get a journal, it'll inspire you to grow, develop some skills. All disciplines affect each other. Every lack affects the rest. Every new affects the rest. The key is to diminish the lack and set up the new. And you've started a whole new life process. Also, one more thought on discipline. Here's the greatest value of discipline. Self-worth. Self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to discipline. The least lack of discipline. And it starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit, right? The, the, the slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the psyche. Instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best. Sure enough, you say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've begun in the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. Here's the problem with the least neglect. Neglect starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And one neglect leads to another. And the worst of all, when neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence, our self-value. You say, well, how can I get back my self-respect? I'm telling you, you don't have to go to 29 classes. All you have to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your own philosophy, like I should, and I could, and I will. No longer will I let neglect stack up on me so that I will have the sorry scenario six years from now, giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress. That's the key to discipline, okay? Let's get kids involved in the least of disciplines. One more, and then one more, and then another one, and then another one, and then some more. And the first thing you know, you're starting to weave the tapestry of a disciplined life into which you can pour more wisdom and more attitude and more strong feeling, more faith and more courage. Now you've got something, a vessel in which to put it. And now the equities start to flow. And the early return, I'm telling you, if you'll start this process, the early return will have you so excited. You'll commit yourself to this strategy for the rest of your life. You'll never go back to the old ways. Join a new crowd, join a new group. The disciplines to do it, take action. Now here's the other side of discipline. If there's considerable time that passes between the moment of awareness and the time of our implementation, then that is called procrastination. Procrastination, doing it tomorrow instead of today. Procrastination, an almost exact opposite of discipline. The voice within us says, get it done. Discipline then says, do it now. Do it to the best of your ability, today, tomorrow, and always, until finally, the worthy deed becomes instinctive. Procrastination says, later, tomorrow, whenever I get a chance. Procrastination also says, do what is necessary to get by or to impress others. Do what you can, but not what you must. 
In every circumstance we face, we are constantly presented with these two choices. Do it now or do it later. Discipline and procrastination. A choice between a disciplined existence bearing the fruit of achievement and contentment or procrastination. The easy life for which the future will bear no fruit. Only the bare branches of mediocrity. The rewards of a disciplined life are great, but they're often delayed until some time in the future. The rewards for the lack of discipline are immediate, but they are minor in comparison to the immeasurable rewards of consistent self-discipline. An immediate reward for lack of discipline is a fun day at the beach. A future reward of discipline is owning the beach. For most, we choose today's pleasure rather than tomorrow's fortune. So how can you get rid of the easy distractions? How can you keep your mind on what you're trying to do? How can you keep an attitude of doing it all and doing it now? How can you make the choice of discipline over procrastination? How can you stay focused on your ambitions? How can you avoid conversations at the water cooler? You can keep your focus on your work. You can get it done today instead of tomorrow. You've got to really work on your consistent self-discipline on a daily basis, or you'll find yourself distracted. Distracted by negative thoughts, distracted by negative people, distracted by water cooler chatter, and pretty soon, depending on the type of people you've associated with, distracted by your doubts within yourself. Never underestimate the power of influence and associations. And never underestimate the power of your own consistent self-discipline. Now let's take a closer look at discipline, at the three steps to becoming disciplined. First, true discipline is not the easiest option. Most people would rather sleep until 10 o'clock than get up at 6. It's easier to go to bed late, sleep late, show up late, leave early. It's easier not to read. It's easier to turn on the television than to open a book. It's easier to do just enough than to do it all. Waiting is always easier than acting. Trying is always easier than doing. Imagine what life would be like if we didn't have to make our bed in the morning or keep our garage clean or pay our taxes or show up for work tomorrow. Wouldn't it be fascinating if we didn't have to do these things? Wouldn't it be fascinating? What do you suppose would become of us? You're right. Not much. For whatever the reason, the system we live in and contribute to is designed to make the easiest things in life the most unprofitable. Profitable seems to be the most difficult. Our world is and always will be a constant battle between the life of ease and its momentary rewards, and a life of discipline, and its far more significant rewards. Each has its own price, the price of discipline or the price of regret. The second lesson of discipline is that it's a full-time activity. And we've said that the best form of discipline is consistent self-discipline. You see, the discipline that it takes to make your bed every day is the same discipline necessary for success in the world of business. The discipline to organize your garage is the same discipline to organize your business. All disciplines carry through to affect all parts of our lives. If we're disciplined in just one area and lazy in another, guess what? Pretty soon, the lazy side will creep in and destroy the disciplined side. The bad habits in one area of our life will eventually destroy our self-discipline in the areas we've been working on. Consistency cannot be inconsistent. Discipline is the mind being trained to control our lives. Discipline is a set of standards which we've selected as a personal code of conduct. Discipline is imposing on ourselves the requirements for honoring these standards. Once we've adopted these standards of behavior and conduct, we're committed to honor them. And if we don't, then there can be no disciplined activity. Here's the third step to becoming consistently self-disciplined. 
Number one is realizing that discipline isn't the easiest option. Number two, discipline is a full-time activity, day by day, every day. And the third step to becoming self-disciplined is really a philosophy that holds one of life's unique promises. Number three simply says, for every disciplined effort, there is a multiple reward. That's one of life's great arrangements. Life is full of laws that both govern and explain behaviors. But this may well be the major law we need to understand. For every disciplined effort, a multiple reward. For every disciplined effort, a multiple reward. What a concept. If you render unique service, your reward will be multiplied. If you're fair and honest and patient with others, your reward will be multiplied. If you give more than you expect to receive, your reward is more than you expect. But remember, the key word here, as you might well imagine, is discipline. Everything of value requires care and attention. Everything of value requires discipline. Children require discipline. They must have a structure built for them. They must have boundaries to work within so they feel secure and comfortable to explore and grow. They must learn to recognize what's right and what's wrong, what's acceptable behavior, what's not acceptable. Children require unwavering discipline, consistent discipline, or they'll be confused as to how they're supposed to behave. The most valuable form of discipline is the one that you impose on yourself. Don't wait for things to deteriorate so drastically that someone else must impose discipline into your life. Wouldn't that be tragic? How could you possibly explain the fact that someone else thought more of you than you thought of yourself? That they forced you to get up early and get out into the marketplace when you would have been content to let success go to someone else who cared more about themselves. Your life, my life, the life of each one of us is going to serve as either a warning or an example. In the end, it is your own discipline that acts as the magic catalyst to give substance and depth to your ambition. To achieve your own plans and dreams, to have what you want to have, and to become what you want to become, your consistent self-discipline is the magic catalyst.